So there's this concept in the world of user experience where if we're going to show a loading indicator to the user, we don't necessarily want to show them the indicator if the loading workflow is going to be sub-second time. And apparently this gives some sort of perceived performance improvement. I don't necessarily understand that, but that seems to be the, the common consensus. Uh, so in the past, I've looked at using CSS animations with keyframes in order to implement a animation delay. But if we want to delay the animation and also have a pulsing animation, what we can do is actually apply multiple keyframes to the loading indicator, one to fade an element into display, and then one to perform the pulsing animation. So to see this, I'm going to inject a loading indicator and it goes into this ingress container and you can see here we have our spinner and our spinner has multiple keyframe animations applied to it. One is the fade animation and one is the pulse animation. And if we run this again, what you'll see is that after I click, there's going to be a delay between when that indicator actually shows up. So I'm clicking one, two, and there you can see it faded in and then started to shift horizontally back and forth. So let's take a look at how that's working under the hood. So if we jump into the code, here is our template element with our spinner. And what we're going to do is clone this spinner and then inject it into this so that we get the animation to run from the start. And if we jump down here, sorry, uh, you can see we have two different keyframes, one for the fade, and this goes from the opacity zero to opacity one. So when we inject that spinner, it is actually in the DOM, the document object model, but it's going to be visually hidden and then it's going to fade into display. Then we have another one for the pulse and you can see the pulse just uses the transform property here to, to shimmy the element back and forth in the horizontal plane. Now, if we were to try to put the opacity in with this one, what we would get is the opacity fading in and out infinitely, but we only want that to run once, whereas we want this to run infinitely. So what we can do is apply two different animations to the same element, but then have them run with different iteration counts. So you can see we're using a common delimited set of properties, one to apply the fade, one to apply the pulse. The fade one runs once, and then we have another comma separated list of settings here for the iteration count. And then the pulse, the shimmy back and forth horizontally, that runs infinitely. Now we don't have to use a common del delimited list of settings for all of them here. You can see we only have one for the delay, the duration and the fill mode. We're going to be delaying both animations by 2000 milliseconds. That's an exaggerated amount of time for the sake of the demo. Typically you would have something like maybe 300 milliseconds here. And then this is the duration for both of our animations. These could have different durations. This is just what I chose. Um, and then we have a fill mode of both. And the reason we need a both is because we need uh, this to apply previous to the animation, to the start of the animation. And then we need this to apply after the animation for the fade has completed. And then the both on the infinite one doesn't really matter. So again, what we get from this is the ability to, using just CSS keyframe animations, both delay the showing of the loading indicator and then the ongoing shimmying or the pulsing of the loading indicator, which gives us that perceived performance for potential sub-second loading time while also giving a little bit of razzle-dazzle to the loading indicator once it is rendered to the user visually. And we didn't even need anything like React Suspense to do this. Just pure CSS, not even any timeouts or intervals in JavaScript. Just pure CSS keyframe animation. Easy peasy.